Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So yes, we've begun our Christmas painting season here on my channel, <laughs> as you can see. And on this tutorial today, I'm going to go over how to paint all those lovely greenery elements, branches, twigs, etc. So you can create beautiful cards or just decor, etc. All that fun stuff. I go over step by step. I show you how I use certain brushes to create these kind of strokes and all that good stuff. Um, it's really simple. Trust me, any skill level can do it. And if you're a Patreon member, you get the bonus where I add in the candy cane. <laughs> but if you're not a Patreon member, you can just easily stick that in there as well. Um, so, and there's no traceables for this either. I'm just, you're just showing you how to create these wonderful designs. And they're really simple once you get the brush strokes down. So we're going to go over brush strokes and how to paint these and what kind of brushes I use and why. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. If you're not a Patreon member and want to get that bonus extra extended videos, I have extended videos, exclusive tutorials, and I have a live stream in the top tier, and all this other stuff, a Facebook page, Facebook group. Click the link uh, below in the description box, you know, and then you can go there and you can join and cancel anytime. So it's just a place people go and support my channel, which I really appreciate. But without further ado, let's get painting some greenery for our Christmas season. So first what you're going to do is you're just going to grab a scrap uh, piece of hot press paper. I have some scrap here. I have my Princeton 12 Neptune series brush and I'm mix up some greens. I'm going to use my cadmium yellow deep. I'll put it in a couple of little areas. I'll grab my Prussian blue and I already got a nice light, light green here. More Prussian blue over here. Even more. I'll make a deeper green. I like to add a little burnt umber so the green isn't such a bluish green. It's a slight tinge to the bluish green. All right, now clean off my brush. Now, why I like to use a big brush, it makes looser kind of, you know, strokes and much, much easier to glide across. So I like cut press for many different reasons. Um, it's a different type of paper. It's going to have a different kind of like scenario when you're painting with it. It's going to sit, the, the color is going to be more vibrant and sit on top. And it's not going to bleed like a, a cold press will. And this is still cotton, but um, it's still a great paper to use. I'm using the Arsh cold, hot, excuse me, hot press. So we take our paint and the consistency of the paint. We talk about this all the time. We have different consistencies. It's kind of like more of like a milk to coffee, right? Think of those beverages. That's how much water is added to make it look like or feel like that kind of consistency. So hold the brush here like a drawing, you know, like drawing with the paint, with the pen, you hold it like this. It's like practicing by like just swiping like this and just kind of wiggling and connecting the paint. And you have a nice green. Swipe again, real quick. We're going, we're going quick here. We're not thinking about drawing really slow. We're moving, wiggle back and forth, moving, moving, moving fast. And you have that beautiful loose look. Again, here we go, sideways. Again, wiggle back and forth. Bend some of the little needles going that way or out this way. Then you're going to grab some of the darker color here and kind of bleed some of that in. See how it just sits on top because it's hot press? That's the kind of fun of it. It's going to make these hard edges, but I like that, right? So that's how you make those simple, loose kind of uh, evergreen, you know, uh, greenery. If you want to get a little tighter, you can try and do that, but it doesn't have that same feel. You see, you just do them like this the little lines. It's not the same as this. It's never going to be that. That's why I use a bigger brush. Now I use this one color, which again, I'll wiggle back and forth and kind of push down and connect it. I have a nice prettier evergreen than this guy. You don't want to be doing these little lines and these little lines like this. They don't look pretty. They look kind of, you know, amateur. And you want to look a little more professional and have a loose style. So again, I'm just showing you again. You put the line in first and you see how I'm kind of just touching, it, it glides on this paper. Back and forth, wiggle, wiggle, back and forth, leaving some white and boom. You do this kind of fast. If you keep thinking about it too much, you won't be able to create it. Um, Mixing these colors again. Now we'll do like some like simple leaves. 
You can do rounded ones. You just kind of go like this. See, I'm kind of swooping, connecting with the stem. Swoop, connect. You can go back in and add that last swoop. You can do a line and do the same thing. Swoop. See how we're doing these different greens? That's how we do it. Now, obviously, if you have a skinnier brush, the brush is going to dictate the kind of blooms or stems or leaves that you make. So here we have the Princeton 8 Long Round Velvet Touch. Now, it's a looser, I mean, excuse me, stiffer kind of brush than the Neptune. So it'll be stiffer kind of greens. See, you get the line. You can still go back and forth, but you see, it's going to make it create a little thinner, stiffer green. So again, I'm kind of connecting it, but leaving it loose. You just don't want this line and these little like, greens like this, like little soldiers. No, we want this. We want this looseness. We want that fun. Play with the paper. Grab a scrap line. You're just kind of going back and forth and connecting. See how I'm wiggling back and forth? Even like if I had little lines like this, swooping, 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 swooping. It looks more professional and unique than this little, these little lines you see here. And then we can just use the compound strokes to our advantage too. So you can push down and pull back. See like that? And connect those. And you have nice little greens as well. All right, so I grabbed an even bigger piece of paper of uh, uh, the hot press. Now you're gonna practice like using your wrist, moving and going like this. So if you have, I always tell people, use your pinky as a guide. Don't wanna get your, your fingers too much on paper because it can create a resist with the oil on your hands, if you wanna wash your hands. But get used to going like this and putting your pinky there. So you can use your pinky as a guide to hold you, and see? It's there and you kind of move your hand like this. And then from there, you can go with that same technique. Wiggle back and forth. You create a lovely little loose greenery, right? Using the pinky guide, if you have to use the pinky. Now, normally I would start off with the lighter color. I'm still using number eight, Princeton. And going back and forth. Well, now let's play with some compound strokes, right? What are compound strokes? These are strokes I'll show you right now. Where you're pushing down and pulling back, pushing down, pulling back. And this is skinny because the brush is skinny and long, so you got this long compound strokes. If the brush changes, like the Princeton Neptune series, then we've got shorter, fatter ones because the brush is shorter and fatter with this bigger. And it's the belly holds a lot of paint. So you really want to get some paint mixed up. I'm mixing up more paint here, a little bit more yellow and green. And the consistency is loose like a coffee. Now, push down, pull back. It's a fatter, fatter leaf. You can kind of twist it. You see how you get those? So those will come in handy. If you want to create another type of greenery. See like that, just pull down like that. Connect it with the tip. You can just, again, use a tip and connect it and pull back, connect it, pull back. Now we're building our greenery. See, practice helps. <laughs> uh, you can also just do some regular leaves with this, mixing up some green. Again, a stroke, a couple of strokes, you can just go in a circular kind of swooping again. I talked about this before, swoop up, down, connect, swoop up, down, connect. It fills in because it's a bigger brush, right? It's this method, swooping. If you want to leave a little white. Feel free to turn your paper around if you find yourself you can't paint downward like that. See, I painted this kind of looking like it's downward and you flip it around and be downward. The swooping, whoop, connecting. So now that you've got the evergreen and the swooping green method, when it comes to berries and branches, very simple. Just mix up some browns or have browns. I just have this front umber right here. Again, you want more natural looking, so I just start here, kind of like make the stem kind of jagged 
going down, out like that. And then you have your greens, you're connecting your greens. So you could just do some simple leaves, just pushing down, grab some more yellow here. Just push down and pull back, down and pull back. And we're gonna put some berries here. I have this lovely color called Pyro Rubin from Holbein. I'll put a link, well, not a link, but I'll put it in the description box. It's a beautiful Christmas red. I also have cadmium red light, and you can combine the two to make it even more of like a Christmassy Christmas red. And we're just doing circles here, right? And I've got the number eight long round. I always like to leave a little circle, a little white in my circle. I consider it calling it a halo. It's like the highlight effect. Just, again, you want to cluster them. You don't want to be like circle, soldier, circle, soldier, circle, soldier on a branch. <laughs> you see how they're like a soldier? You want to have them look a little more natural by clustering them. They don't always have to be the same size. You can make some even bigger as they're getting closer to you. But see how they cluster? It looks a little more natural. Right? And last but not least, let's talk about maybe putting in a ribbon or so. This is where some drawing comes into play. And really, if you want to get great as an artist, you need to draw. You need to draw all the time. So again, here's a simple bow for you, right? Think of two lines connect by like going up and down the river, up and down the river, up and down the river. And then do a swoop, swoop. And then here you're gonna go wiggle it like that. And then you just do like the little lines like this and you have a ribbon. See that? That didn't take much to do. You can slow this whole video down and see that. And how you make it more unique with your watercolor. I water down my red that I have over here. It's hard to see everything in the camera, but you have that all outlined. I'm gonna go follow the curve you think the, the ribbon would go. So you're wiggling it with the curve, right? And then same thing here, I can kind of bow or go under, like up and over. And I'm just doing this really fast and loose and it's not perfect and precise and I don't want it to be. And there's a reason for that because then it looks kind of just too tight and not loose. <laughs> and it's drying pretty fairly quickly. So I'm gonna go back over it, cross it, and then you've got a nice gingham type ribbon. And where the two meet, where the two colors meet. Um, see, I did it inside of the bow too. You wanna keep do that, it looks more realistic. Um, you wait till it dries. Maybe you have a little thicker paint and you just kind of put the darker color where the two meet. Now it's kind of wet right now. <clears throat> so um, it's gonna bleed a little bit, but you get the idea. You can wait till it dries and then you just hit those two areas. And I'm just doing this really loosely and that's all you need to do. And that's really just a really simple ribbon. So all these elements, we combine them into one design, which we're gonna do now. One last little lesson before we even begin that is to come up with some thumbnails of what you would like to do with these little greens, right? And why you do thumbnails, I talk about this again with the drawing, these little squares are called thumbnails. These are a little bit bigger than normal thumbnails. I make them much smaller than that. And you figure out where do you want the bow? Where do you want the greens? Do you want an upper right hand corner? Do you want maybe a bow here coming out and then some greens out and then swooping downward? These are really rough sketch, but that's how you figure out your composition because composition is key. Do you want like a mistletoe right in the middle? All right, here's your bow. Have some greens coming down. It's not really mistletoe, but kind of like a you know floral sprig. Do you want it like a wreath, right? Then you put the wreath in here and there's a bow here. And then you can figure out where you want the wreath. Or do you just want to do half, half? You could just do greens all over the place, but where would you put the bow? You don't even have to have the bow. It's up to you. You could do a candle, right? You can have a bow on the side and then you can do all the greens. These are what you do. You plan out. What is it I'm gonna do with these greens? Do I just want sprigs of greens? Do I wanna make cards? So if I wanna make cards, do I just want greens coming out all here? I don't even need a ribbon, right? Or you could put the bow here on top, right? And have the ribbon kind of going like this. 
so many different things you could do in the greenery you know all this good stuff don't even have to have a ribbon it's up to you you can have candy canes ribbon and sprigs plan this out and you don't have to draw it meticulously because we're going to paint it loosely that is the key plan out what you want to do and then go for it so we talked about the bow and we talked about the sprigs i just drew a simple bow here i could like i showed you i like wiggle this kind of want to go tight here and wiggle here look at some bows you can see them on the internet just go through that and then once you've got your bow i'm doing a central basically just right smack in the center kind of composition you can just kind of like flush out where the twigs or things will go from here right you can obviously have them coming out here and down here and all over don't want it like in a round kind of situation so maybe you have them coming out this way this way it's up to you so you can start off many different ways you could do the bow first i always like to do the greens first it's kind of my thing so we have those colors we already mixed up i'm going to mix up some more of this chartreuse green with cadmium yellow deep and prussian blue and here we go with my big old number 12 neptune series brush let's start off brush just by again putting some greens out this way out this way and from here i'll start to just wiggle that brush work and i'm on the hot press here this is a um this is the lesion hot press paper pad any kind of hot press you can find i like these you know 100 percent cotton as well fabiano makes one but this one is I think it's, this is the Legion Stonehenge uh, hot press, aqua hot press. Very inexpensive. So I grabbed that one. And it's white, which I like. So here I'm doing that and kind of connecting some of these little greens. You see that? It's just a wiggle and a wiggle. I'm going here, down here. I'm moving around the paper and around the bow. Wiggle really loose and fast. I'm telling you, that's the key. You want to go a little fast and put some down here. And if I go on top of it with the dark green, I don't mind. And it doesn't always have to be like these green type of greens. You can do those swooping um, rounder kind of greens. So we can make some of those. Just like typical stems you'd see in leaves. Being really loose, kind of like there, kind of not kind of coming down here putting some connecting this way I might just make this fatter as one of those kind of leaves as well I have kind of coming down this way and out this way we get this really bright chartreuse green happening by the way you can mix all different color greens I have those two greens you can mix some bluish greens play with the greens <laughs> now I mix the two of them together see I take more bluish darker green mix those now I've got a medium green I could play with putting that color in here now see the swooping kind of technique just really loose on this really loose just on this paper here we can start to do some real detailed ones in a bit um, I like the hard edge and I don't want to blend bleed we could bleed some of it if this is already dry, but well, you can go back in and put in some color right on top of each other. That's another method as opposed to bleeding it. Like this one's still wet, so you can kind of bleed in some of those areas if you want. It's up to you. Sometimes I like to do that and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I find it much better just to put the dark color right on top. And now I'm going to grab this deeper green. Go on top of this foliage that I created here and here. I'm leaving this space empty. I want to put some ditzy kind of foliage in there. And I've got this dark. I'm going to get this a little bit darker by adding some blue, a little bit of brown, more blue. This is the Prussian blue. So you get this nice, nice deep green. Uh, the consistency would be like around milk. Get that little deep blue, some brown. Here we go even really dark. I kind of want a darker under that lovely little bow. I want to go too dark too soon. We can ble we're bleeding this around here. See? 
adding in the greens, leaving those light yellow greens in the bottom here, going around this bow, putting some deeper greens here, just like that. And now I'm going to switch to the eight long round. I might start adding in a nice twigs. You can make them brown or green, whatever. I'm going to put some twigs kind of happening out here. We talked about these twigs, right? We can add some berries on the twigs. Um, coming down, of course. So the twigs are like I'm kind of moving around the bow. And now I'm going to do a different kind of green. I'm going to probably add this lovely uh, color called Peacock Blue. This some of my green here. It's going to be more of a turquoisey green. Change up the greens. Don't want them all the same color. And we can do some ditzy little small ones up coming up this way. Again, little little um, branches coming off and then circular motion to do some rounder type green foliage. Build on top of the things that you did. It would help if they dry too. If you did it when they're wet, it's just gonna kinda bleed into it. So you might wanna wait till some of these are dry. Going out on top of the ones that I did before that were already dry and just doing some round leaves you could do some eucalyptus leaves. Play with that. And again, I'm going to bring this down here. Pull some little branch off that. Do some rounded leaves connecting to this. Small little ditzy ones. All this will come into play. We could do some bigger ones. Make eucalyptus kind of in there. I like the turquoise. It's going to play nicely with the bright red color of the bow. So at this point, I'm going to let some of this dry and I'm going to start to work on my bow. And why I'm doing back and forth green and bow is because you're kind of building composition by, you know, going back and forth between the colors and then you see where the, this, these like holes are that you don't like, right? If we just did all the greens and then you go and do the bow, then what happens when you go to do that, you're like, mm, maybe I overdid it. So it's nice to kind of play back and forth. So we'll let this dry and we're going to do work on the bow. Okay, so now let's dry. I'm going to go back and use the red that I had. And we talked about this before. Do my little line work. Kind of wiggle. I might be a little more careful this time. Just a little bit. And you can make these stripes wider or skinny. Um, as you, you know, this could be really big, like a huge gingham. This is going to be a smaller one than I did, but you could have made it much wider. Again, you follow the flow of the bow. So mine's kind of like going this way. Follow it, go. It gets obviously smaller as it goes into each other. If you need to turn your paper, turn your paper. So I always feel like it's better to move the brush and hold it on its side. Oh, that's a little too dark. But that's okay if it is and the other ones are not. The imperfections and make it really kind of pretty as it is. I think people get really too bogged down that it has to look a certain way and it doesn't. So I see how loose and goosey. That's a little too light, almost like pink. I don't know if I want that either. It's a nice balance between the two. So I'm just really gonna put this in with my eight long round Princeton really quickly. Then we have the inside of the bow. And then of course we do the crossing of it, right? And then we'll have a nice gingham. Made mine kind of fat and skinny. See how I did that? And then just like that, fat goes a little skinny. That and goes down a little skinny. And then we play with this going this way. Always have your paint mixed up ready to go. If you don't have it all ready to go, well, then you run into a problem. You don't have that nice smooth stroke. See? Smooth stroke. <laughs> and look, at mine is not perfect and it's not intended to be. And then, of course, the inside. Don't forget that inside part. 
What I didn't talk about is what you could use also is ink with this design. And I think I'll be using that at the end, like pen and ink. So once that's dry in the certain sections like I showed you, you go back in, you fill in all those little squares that are connecting on top of each other so that you looks like a real gingham with this design. See? Wait till it dries though. Some of mine might not be dry, but that's okay. I'm just showing you for effect. It does not have to be perfect. Getting a little bit more paint. Going pretty fast. Going down to the tip here. Voila. And of course the inside. And if I miss up any of these other ones. Boom. So now we've got a bow. See that? Now I think I had the inside bigger here, but I don't. You can actually use the red too to kind of outline your ribbon if you want to do that. Like a sweet little outline. Now the inside would be darker, obviously. We're going to add a little shadow with some color. I'll show you how to do that. And I'm going to put this darker color here. Just kind of outlining some of this. Don't have to do this step. It's just a little extra. Okay, so now we see that we missed some green here. I'm just going to go fill it in. Grabbing my dark green, adding some of that evergreen kind of poking. It's a layering kind of situation with this design and I can put this one out here, poking, wiggle back and forth, right? Um, obviously down here we don't have enough stuff going on. We need to add. I'm gonna wiggle with my number eight long round. Some lovely greens going down here. Should have something over here. She's so gonna fill us all in. And again, mix up enough paint, because here I ran out of paint and I'm scrambling to mix up paint. Just nice evergreens. A little bit deeper right under this one. So that that bow really stands out. And go right on top of these other ones. Don't be afraid to play. See? Now I feel like it's all circular here. Very, very, very chartreuse green. Oops. We're going to have to play around with some of this a little more. Adding a deeper green branch here. I'll add some green stems and branches and leaves here. I don't want to overwhelm it with a lot of dark green either. I just want to fill some all the spaces in that are kind of missing. And then you could write like Merry Christmas on top or on the bottom. If you have a computer, you could scan this in and you could be like just, I had mine central, but you could make it more like on the edge. It's all a matter of preference. I'm just gonna wiggle this again. Get those greens in there. So the, the dark color and against that nice bow Gonna make a bow pop. You can have some sprigs going on top of it too. But just a simple greenery. Now we can start to add in some of those lovely berries we talked about. You can make them a little bigger, small, cluster it. And now I notice that this red is much deeper than our bow. We can go back to our bow a little bit and make it darker. But let's add some berries. Again, cluster, cluster, cluster. I don't have a brown branch over here, but I'm just gonna move the berries around. Wiggle. If I don't leave the halo, it's no big deal. I'm just moving around the page here. This is how we just do something really simple. Create some nice greenery. A little sprig. <laughs> 
Yeah, see, I like my bow. I feel like it might have been too light. If you want to try and go back over it, you can. Make it a little bit darker. Get a little bit deeper because, you know, we have these berries that are darker. So I went over my ribbon again just to like pop it because it was just so light and then I added some more of the red. And I'm going to go back in now that I'm standing up and seeing and I'm going to fill in some of these areas again with even deeper green, thick like butter. The paint consistency really deep over that. And then in here because it's going to be highlighting, you can add some light green and some dark green over it. It's just going to really make it pop. You get a few wiggles back and forth with this evergreen. More green, play out this way. And since I'm kind of pulling this down this way, do all that fun stuff. You can do a little splattering with the color. Don't feel like you can't do that. That's going to add some more fun to your picture. Make a nice gray for shadow. I would wait till it dries though, right? And you can put a little of the shadow in here, under here. And here's the inside ribbon. When we talked about the inside ribbon, it's gonna be darker. Just kind of put that on top of those colors that we mixed. And you'll see, now we have the inside ribbon. Kind of really in there, melded nicely. So I hope this was helpful when you're painting greens. If you're really kind of struggling, if you're new at it and you're starting to figure out how do I paint them loosely, I really like it on the hot press. Um, I can go back in with this lovely fountain pen and add some nice low lines. See how I put the lines in the ribbon? Little wiggles and then you've got this. It's kind of fun little element to add. Add a pen if you want to do that. don't have to. And of course the pen helps when you're writing words too. All right, thanks for stopping by my channel. I hope you learned something. Uh, have fun painting Christmas sprigs and all that good stuff. Yeah, take care guys. Have a great day.